and welcome everyone to the SNEA session on scalable storage performance for high density application. Uh, today, Jay Mohan Kalikal, uh, known as Jay, and I, uh, Naveen Krishnamurthy, we would be talking primarily about uh, NVMe technology and uh, provide details uh, to substantiate our claim that it is a ubiquitous choice for modern data centers and the storage intensive applications. Uh, so for a brief introduction, I'm Naveen Krishnamurthy, part of the product management team from VMware, uh, Cloud Infrastructure Group, responsible for external storage solutions such as VMFS, NFS, clustering solutions, NVMe, NVMe or Fabric, and the cloud native storage with VWATS. And along with me as a co-speaker is Jay Mohan Kalikal from Broadcom. Okay, brief look at the agenda. Uh, here is how we plan to take you through uh, the session today. Uh, we will start with a brief introduction of NVMe and NVMe or fabric technologies, uh, which I'm sure most of you are already aware of. We will not spend a lot of time on that, uh, but we will then look at NVMe specification updates and delve into the details wherein we discuss why, how, and what NVMe does uh, to address the challenges you know, associated with modern data centers and modern applications. We shall also look at some of the performance results uh, which have uh, been published uh, with this technology. Okay. Okay. Uh, so NVMe technology is everywhere, right? Uh, be it the solid state disk for its solutions, disaggregated storage solutions, or even the, even the uh, shared storage options. What we have with some of the premier storage vendors uh, it is in fact also has made its way into handheld devices such as cell phones, uh, uh, tablets, and it is the primary choice for enterprise level servers, um, the edge compute, and also the modern data centers. Okay, why NVMe? What, what technology differentiation does it bring? Right? So NVMe is known for a high performance and low latency. The performance boost from NVMe will benefit latency sensitive workloads, quality of service driven application, other areas such as real time, big data analytics or database environments with heavy workloads. The NVMe protocol leverages parallel low latency data paths that are like industry standard processor architectures. This offers significantly higher performance and lower latencies compared to the legacy protocols such as SAS or SETA. It, it allows workloads to accelerate existing applications that require faster speeds while enabling new applications and capabilities for real time workload processing in the data center and at the edge. So zone name spaces, zone name spaces support, uh, which is available with NVMe will reduce the right amplifications, which is associated with most of the flash technologies. It also eliminates the garbage collection, which is also a pretty high lift on the, uh, on the device side uh, in order to maintain the rights uh, because the flash involves uh, before write an array cycle and reduces long tail latencies resulting in substantial improvements on the latency front. On the capacity front as well, these devices are moving up to 4 TB and more with QLC and NAND adoption and in fact is uh, the choice for uh, the temperature reduction or the cooler and efficient storage. Okay, uh, NVMe or Fabric, extending the NVMe technology beyond the local connect and over wire or Fabric is the NVMe or Fabric technology. Uh, it can deliver latencies which are on par with NVMe SSDs inside servers, thereby elevating the effect of the Fabric interconnect. It can be used for shared storage solutions wherein the storage is shared with many applications, resulting in higher utilization and lower total cost of ownership. Also, Fabric attached data enables cloud-like dynamic access and workload mobility. We shall look into more details on this as we move through the slides. Now let's look at uh, uh, briefly what the NVMe Express technology specification is up to and what the roadmap is. As you can see in the picture here, there are three main categories with respect to the NVMe specification. One is the NVMe base spec as applicable to the devices, NVMe or fabric spec as applicable to the fabric uh, aspects of that and the MI spec covering the management and the infrastructure aspects of the solution. The technology, as you can see, is getter, getting better by the day, right? It started in 2015 and now we are in 2021. The first spec for all the three categories were rolled out in mid 2016. In fact, in May 2016, um, uh, whereas in MI was a little ahead, 
of the curve and it uh, came out in November 2015 itself. Uh, and uh, uh, as I was mentioning, there has been a lot of effort in making sure that, that this specification improves and is, a, is better suited for modern applications and data centers. NVMe 2 spec is now available. The NVMe 2 family of specifications was released on June, uh, is released in June 2021. The NVMe library of specification is divided into eight different specifications, including the base spec, command spec set specification, which includes NVMe command set, ZNS command set, KV command set, the transport specification, which includes PCA transport specification, RDA transport specification, and the TCP transport specification. The management interface specification will be kept separate. The restructured two dot specifications enable faster, simpler development of NVMe technology, supporting the seamless deployment of flash-based solutions in many emerging market segments. Right? The specifications include evolutionary new features like ZNS, key value pair, uh, for object media, rotational media, and also the endurance group management. Now let's look at uh, some of the business cases with NVMe uh, to understand why it is important. Right? For the first case, you, you, uh, the first use case here is with the faster flash. Um, here, the compute is connected to the NVMe storage array uh, through the fabric interconnect. Right? It could be FC, it could be TCP or RDMA. This helps in achieving lower latency uh, with NVMe fabric, as uh, we also uh, discussed in the in the previous section, as compared to the SCSI. It ha uh, the advantage with NVMe is it has savings both on the host side as well as on the target side. So uh, it it also helps achieve very low host very low host server CPU utilization. Um, on the target side, it is scalable to hundreds of devices. In fact, more than that, making higher capacity available to the applications. Um, 25 25 gig, uh, 32 gig, 100 gig bandwidth support, a large bandwidth support to support 32 gig PCI and faster NVMe devices as well. So, and as we speak, this is evolving. The second use case here is where the storage class memory um, uh, is for the storage class memory, which is used as a storage array cache. Uh, the storage, which is used inside an array, right, is used as an array cache. It results in improved performance, uh, benefited from low latency media, uh, and caching or fast storage, fast storage, in fact, removes the whatever the PCIe latency is, whatever minimal latency was there, even that is removed. And uh, there are benefits definitely from the improved performance, higher bandwidth, and lower latency. And the third key use case that we want to mention here is the in-memory database. Uh, the the entire uh, the storage memory can be used as an in-memory database for data management for some of the data-intensive uh, database applications. Um, the NVMe storage here is mapped to the host and can be used as an in-memory database, as I was speaking. Um, it is a new storage tier, right? You know, which is an in-memory database. It, it opens up a lot of possibilities, eliminates data center silos, eliminates standard storage, and it enables all the data center, all the data services, which could be snapshots, data tiering, availability, workload migration, uh, when used in this mode. Now, uh, let's... Uh, uh, I will hand it over to Jay to cover some of the potential architectures of NVM usage. Thanks, Naveen. Uh, I'm Jay Mohan Kalikal. I work as a distinguished engineer with Broadcom. So let's look at uh, the most common architecture uh, and uh, see how it can be transformed for next generation applications. There are many other uh, you know, architectures like JBOF, uh, which are mostly used in the back end and uh, that ha they have been extensively discussed in many presentations so i'm not going to focus on them so this is a standard architecture uh, where many hosts uh, are connected to existing fiber channel uh, san uh, or ethernet technologies primarily based on uh, udp or tcp that is uh, nvme rocky or nvme tcp and the the of the storage arrays are connected to either of the sands in the case of modern fiber channel switches and hvas uh, for nvme over fc there may not be much uh, change required uh, many target vendors allow upgrading existing scsi based uh, fiber channel arrays so if you have the right hb and switch probably it's just a software upgrade this 
is one step further. Uh, so once you have the NVMe or fabric set up, uh, then it is possible to connect this storage uh, to many storage applications, uh, including hyperconverged software-defined storage and Kubernetes. Either the LUNs, that's a simple uh, uh, way of doing it, is either the LUNs or namespace can be directly attached to the consumer uh, to be consumed as a local disk, or it can be done intelligently. For example, the many storage arrays have the capability to do RAID without having to send copies across the network and creating choke points, and also provide many services uh, like disaster recovery and backup. So we can use the capabilities and high performance of the NVMe over Fabrics technology, but at the same time, get the flexibility that Kubernetes and cloud native technologies provide. This will be important as the world is going to move towards a hybrid infrastructure as the next major step. So let's look into what is that. A few years back, the general belief was that the public cloud will take over and the on-prem data centers would pretty much cease to exist. However, over the last two years or so, uh, the major cloud providers have started offering various solutions uh, to the hybrid cloud. Uh, many of you would have seen this paper from Sarah Wang and Martin Casado uh, the, uh, from A16C, which is the Anderson Horowitz. And this statement that you are crazy if you don't start in the cloud and you're crazy if you stay in it, pretty much sums up uh, the argument. They have looked at around 50 public software companies and they figured that they lose about $100 billion in market cap due to cloud expenses. And if you look at the broader public companies, the market cap is suppressed around more than $500 billion. And they've looked at an example of Dropbox, uh, which you'd have heard. Uh, they saved around $175 million over two years by shifting away. So if you are operating at scale, the cost of cloud can at least double your infrastructure bill. And there's also another article from uh, business Insider that came out recently in August, uh, titled The Honeymoon is Over for Cloud Computing. So if you look at all of this, this is just uh, getting a, giving you a picture of the direction uh, in which the industry is moving. And this is a simple uh, representation I drew. Many customers <clears throat> like to use uh, public cloud, uh, maybe multiple public clouds, and an on-prem data center. So this hybrid cloud uh, uh, is basically the ability to use multiple clouds and the on-prem data center, either colo or on-prem. And there are many solutions out there, uh, including from the cloud vendors, like Outpost, Anthos, and Azure Stack as examples. VMware also has a solution called Tanzu. Uh, which is based on primary net, uh, Kubernetes and a couple of other things. I will let Naveen discuss more about that. Uh, and so here I'll hand over to Naveen. Uh, so adding to what Jay mentioned, I would like to highlight the following things with respect to the hybrid cloud. You know, I think it is fairly clear now that not everything belongs to a public cloud, which is why so many forward thinking companies, you know, have, are choosing to have a hybrid mixture of cloud services. Hybrid clouds, they offer both the benefits of uh, the public as well as the private cloud. And uh, the advantage here is the, the existing, uh, they take advantage of the existing architecture in a data center. Uh, hybrid cloud, the typical characteristics of the hybrid cloud is that your on-prem data center, it could be a private or a public cloud resources and workloads, are they can all be managed within the same data set, data management framework. Um, there is also an option where you can connect as existing systems running on traditional architectures that run business, business critical applications and have uh, and might have sensitive data uh, which is not really suited for a high public cloud. Now, how does NVMe fit into this story as, as a choice for cloud storage fabric? Right? So uh, here we should understand that one of the most important factors for any cloud storage service is the speed. And that is what NVMe brings in. Uh, and that depends on the performance of the backend storage devices. Uh, what you can see here in this picture is uh, a, 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 a depiction of a modern cloud uh, deployment model, which includes a set of compute nodes, uh, which are disaggregated, as you can see, as well as some uh, as well as some disaggregated NVMe storage nodes, and 
You can dynamically create nodes of the compute storage resources using the fabric informatics. Of course, this is one such example. I mean, as, as the technology evolves, I, I'm sure that there'll be a lot more uh, opportunities and uh, options that might come up our way. Okay, now uh, let us look at the VMware cloud native uh, storage solution as an example. What is cloud native storage? Uh, it, it is a vSphere and the Kubernetes feature uh, that makes Kubernetes aware of how to provision storage on vSphere on demand in a fully automated scalable fashion, as well as providing visibility for the administrator into the container volumes through the CNS UI. Um, and it is of course tied into the vSphere uh, uh, v vSphere vCenter. CNS supports workloads which are running on Kubernetes since Kubernetes has evolved as the de facto standard for the container orchestration, right? The solution is based on the CSI standard and it offers block and file persistent storage. It is the de facto storage platform for vSphere with Tanzu and it is uh, the choice for storage intensive applications that uh, which, which can benefit from NVMe or NVMe or fabric. Again, because the devices offer higher speeds, uh, this is yet another solution and uh, uh, taking an opportunity to bring in the, the vSphere uh, or the VMware solution here, right? Uh, where you can take advantage of the faster media for these, so some of these modern applications. Now let's quickly look at uh, one of the aspects of NVMe or Fabric, which NVMe TCP, uh, which is gaining a lot of traction in the industry and how it is useful for edge storage uh, specifically, right? Uh, so as you can see here, uh, a recent study that was done uh, by the International Data Corporation, IDC, which uh, again, most of you must be aware of, it, it predicts that by 2025, it is a whopping 6 billion customers. They interact with data every day, or 75% of the world population interact with data. So what this, what this does, it will skyrocket the demand for storage at the edge. And not just the innovation on the, on the data center front, on the storage front, but edge is a very important factor here. So the best way to handle this, data overgrowth or overload is with solutions that separate the storage, which is growing, also growing exponentially from the compute, right? Which is not as fast. Gone are those days where the compute used to beat storage, but now storage is gaining a lot of speed and momentum. Right? The fastest and the most efficient way to make that possible is by leveraging NVMe or fabric. And with the standardization of TCP, uh, you know, the, there is a production grade NVMe TCP storage solution opportunities, which are providing highest performance with no constraints to the client side infrastructure. The solution, it is very important for edge deployments where adding network constraints can be impossible, right? So edge, one of the things that edge does is to uh, make sure that there are no network latencies as well. So thanks to the storage, new storage protocol, uh, the storage solutions are also helping our organizations disaggregate, disaggregate storage over any IP network. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and you know, uh, and, and have the several proximate edge uh, locations into HA storage pools so that uh, there is uh, stateless edge instances which can seamlessly utilize storage at the aggregation layer. Over to performance now and um, I will briefly cover what uh, we have on the performance front before handing it over to Jay. So quick look at vSphere, NVMe or fabric performance, uh, what we have demonstrated with, through Broadcom and Jay can of, of course provide more details in this regard and also NVIDIA. The, uh, the, uh, the Tolly test report was, which was published in April 2020 compared NVMe FC and SCSI FC. As you can see, uh, there were they observed 2.4X times higher transactions compared to, compared to SCSI for uh, some of the enterprise level database applications such as a SQL Server and Oracle. And with Oracle, it was 2.1x, but nevertheless, uh, greater than 2x performance on, on with both those solutions. Um, and the storage review that was published by NVIDIA has demonstrated a jump of more than 80% in the throughput with 64K sequential read workloads and a drop in latency by uh, more than 36% when they used uh, NVMe, RDMA and compared with uh, iSCSI. Uh, so with that, uh, I will hand it over to Jay to take you through the uh, all the performance results and other details. Uh, thank you everyone uh, for taking time to uh, check this session out. Uh, I hope you'll have a lot of fun listening to other speakers uh, on this NIA conference. Thank you. All the best. Thanks, Naveen.
As Naveen showed in slide 19, VMFS also provides first class disks along with other storage technologies. This allows CSI based technologies as well as NVMe over fabrics to be used as storage for Kubernetes solutions like uh, Tanzu. So just like when VMs were introduced many years ago, there was a huge spike in the storage requirements, uh, requirements for performance. The same kind of requirements uh, is going to be, high, higher requirement is, going, is expected when Tanzu and other technologies allow for widespread adoption of containers. So this makes it very hard on the storage system, existing storage system, and we need uh, storage systems that can provide low latency with very high performance. So for that, we have been working with VMware uh, for the last couple of years to improve the performance and Broadcom and, and VMware are partnered for the last two years and we have some numbers to show uh, which, 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 is, uh, which I want to get into next. So this is a, a simple configuration. There's one server uh, running ESX uh, uh, 7.0 or the latest one. And there are six VMs. Uh, each VM is a Linux plus 15, six CPUs with 8 GB, one LAN per PV SCSI controller. And there are two threads uh, per uh, LAN or namespace. And each thread is uh, running 60 uh, queued up. So that makes it a total of 120 queued up. Uh, running over the LPE 35002 uh, from MLX using a Brocade uh, G620 and a NetApp A300. So uh, again, two 32 gig links. Uh, uh, this is not 64 gig, it's uh, still 32. So at the bottom, what you see here is the performance of ESXi 7.0. This is a read IOPS. This is an IOPS test. And here is the latest ESXi with the latest driver on the same hardware. And you can see that it has gone almost dub, uh, three times, right, at the lower IOS. And you can see that as, as it hits a certain uh, level, it's following the line rate. I'm pretty sure if you go for 64 gig, it'll go further down. So th the performance has improved a lot uh, over the last couple of years. This is another example. Uh, this test uses uh, RHEL 8 with Oracle database uh, and is using MLX uh, uh, 64 gig fiber channel te uh, technology and the Lenovo FC switch and Lenovo sto uh, storage. So these are the numbers. You can see that it's a whopping 11.2 million IOPS. And it is running on multiple targets, I think 24 uh, uh, NVMe FC targets. <coughs> and, uh, the, but, but you can see that it, it reaches uh, almost 95% of line rate at 2K. <coughs> So this is a, a, a test to show the, uh, you know, on, on a uh, real world application. This is Oracle Database 19C. Uh, you can see that when it is running at 16 gig, it takes about 1200 seconds to run this particular test. And when you move to 32 gig, pretty much close to half. And then when you move to 64 gig, again, almost halving. So as you move the technology, you can see that uh, the time taken to execute a certain a set of queries or certain requests, it's it's kind of halving uh, as you double the speed. This is a, a test run by Tolly. Again, uh, it is run on uh, 7.0, ESXi 7.0. Uh, we run compared SQL Server as well as Oracle 19C. Um, and basically, we're trying to compare NVMe EFC versus NV, uh, SCSI EFC and on an ATAP A800 using Brocade uh, G620 uh, switch. So here you can see that this is, what we are trying to do is more of an apples to apples comparison. Uh, we are using everything same except that the stack uh, is slightly different and the driver is slightly different uh, where it goes through NVMe or SCSI. Uh, and same with uh, <clears throat> Oracle. 
so you can see that with NVMe FC, uh, the performance, uh, the TPM, the transactions per minute, is 142% better than SCSI-based FCP. Uh, on Oracle 19C, it's 114% better uh, TPM compared to uh, uh, SCSI FCP. And this is, again, uh, a HammerDB test where we are looking at TPM uh, with Microsoft SQL Server 2017. That's showing 2.4 times uh, better TPM and Oracle is about 2.1 times better uh, TPM. So in conclusion, the future looks more like a mix of public cloud and on-prem data center, which we call the hybrid cloud or colos or any such combination. The, and the future is expected to have a, 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 a mixture of VMs and containers and containers are expected to grow. Uh, uh, grow. Uh, about 500 million applications are expected to be written in the next few years and many of them are going to be cloud native. So we generally expect that a whole lot of containers also are going to be deployed. And this is going to create a lot of demand for faster storage with high throughput. So as you can see, SCSI as well as NVMe FC, and along with other NVMe or Fabric technologies, provide the first class disk uh, for Tansu Kubernetes, and surely provides the low latency and high throughput requirements for those existing VMs as well as modern containerized applications. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our uh, presentation. If you have any feedback, please provide. Uh, thank you very much.